to gag? We're ready to gag. gag. We're gagging? <laughs> it's a gagging kind of afternoon here. Uh, okay. I don't know. Welcome. We're doing call. Look at I don't have like a second step. I just do the gag thing. Work on the segue. Yeah. And then I need a segue into like the second part, which is, hey, what's up? We're playing some uh, some Call of Cthulhu today. We're continuing our Eternal Lies campaign, which if you know anything about Eternal Lies, you know, like, wait a second, Jeff. That's not a Call of Cthulhu campaign. And I said, stop cheating, Ashley. Uh, I really don't appreciate <laughs> you looking and buying all the PDFs. It's just it's just not fun. <laughs> I just randomly looked at you. Sorry. <laughs> this is where my eyes were. <laughs> so offended. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Oh, goodness. Oh, this is going bad. We got to start over. Okay. Y'all <laughs> ready to get... No, just kidding. Uh, all right. So we it's are like next to the city. today. Yep. <laughs> We're in Mexico City. We had a great Delta Green session last night, so I'm feeling pretty pumped, which means we're probably going to bomb this episode. I'm probably going to kill Melissa's character right off the bat, and then no. uh, and then we'll proceed to listen to Pastor Wood's conservative theory crafting uh, as we go to the oh, downtown God. artist mode. <laughs> That's going to be the nap time portion of stream. It's going to be great. Everybody I can't the wait. A pillow. I can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait until Elena marries Patrick and it's all together. That's what it is. You're all, you're married through, you're, you're related through double marriage or something. There's probably a term for it. Once removed yeah. by in-law and pastor refuses to go to the wedding because he just disapproves. We talk about he's yes. going to perform the wedding as a, as yes. pastor. You are just trying to drive a wedge into the PP gang. You, you've been doing this for several sessions now and right. I will not stand for it. I just want to point out that there is one there is one combo that had a critical success when trying to break into something, and it wasn't the PP game. Granted, their very next attempt at doing that, yeah. they had a critical yep, yep, failure. <laughs> but, hey, man. But first. That but the first. Breaks. I mean, it's more exciting. <laughs> Roller coaster of energy, not just a uh, flat line down there. I'm just saying. Got to live a little, Pastor. Got to live a little. <laughs> flat line of failures. <laughs> <laughs> You guys remember Polly? <laughs> Should bring Polly back. If first person Polly. who dies plays Polly. Great. Comes back. Okay. We have everyone has to have the, oh, no. the letter P in their name from now on. All right. Let's start up. May, uh, last time around, Marie, Patrick, the the dream team, made it out of Lose, uh, Lose Records without incident. Uh, Pastor Wood, you confronted a man who was watching the building in a car, but that man sped away after you kind of made him spill a drink. Next, you also got his like, I guess, license plate or whatever, and description of the car, etc. Next, the investigators, you visited the site of Novo Records, and you uh, learned that that manufacturing company uh, had burned down recently, and uh, that its owner, Jorge Novo, was inside while it did so, and thus died. Uh, and then according to the neighbors, um, and I guess looking around at some of the burn patterns and things like that, uh, the theory is, is that it was arson, that it was done intentionally. And both Pastor Wood and Patrick got the impression that maybe at some point Nectar might have been present at that site. Uh, eventually, you all traveled to a studio del Manana, uh, where you along the way spotted that same green two door vehicle that sped away from the site of Loose Records. Uh, it didn't really seem like it was following you directly, but it did head kind of in the same directions, the same places you seem to be going. Um, eventually, when you were at this studio, uh, you found it closed and you found a very nervous man inside with a gun threatening to fire uh, this gun at you. Pause. Hey, Mark, what's up? Tales from uh, Tales of Myth Man. Thank you so much for the raid. Uh, I hope uh, Massive Nelothotep is going well. Um, I don't know. Gag stuff, right? How's, how's it Ooh. gagging? Oh, how's it gagging? Oh. T-shirt. <laughs> Merch opportunity. Boom. Right, Got it. <laughs> actually so upset with the turn this gang is taking okay <laughs> fantastic uh something okay okay so there was a crazy old there was a nervous man had a gun inside don't come in he's gonna shoot you this man turned out to be victor cortez uh and he was scared that either brooks or canova uh sent you all there to kill him like they killed jorge novo you calmed him down you talked to him a little bit and he explained how jorge novo refused to continue to press records for jonathan brooks because he thought that brooks was creating evil uh he also cortez also said that he knew leticia de la luz uh back and met her back when she was still named rosario maria lopez 
and that he probably had her address at home, but he didn't want to go back to because he thought it was being watched. Uh, he also gave some additional background here and there about some recording sessions. He said that Brooks didn't allow him to see Leticia anymore and that eventually she stopped even attending the recording sessions at all. Uh, and instead, Brooks kind of brought these pre-recorded tracks of Leticia and someone he referred to as La Boca uh, for the studio band to work with during the recording sessions. During the interview with Cortez, he also mentioned the name Elena Alcatruz, which uh, caught Pastor Wood's attention. Uh, she apparently worked with the band, that recording session band called Javier Luna and his Grinning Fools. Uh, so it turns out Elena Alcatruz is a distant cousin of Pastor Wood slash his wife. Uh, so he decided to pay Elena a visit at La Paz, one of the, the nightclubs on this, this sort of jazz circuit. Uh, and Patrick came along. Elena was very friendly, very excited to see Pastor Wood, had mem fond memories of seeing him once when she was a child. And then he started talking and things just went a completely different direction. <laughs> she mentioned that she was working with Javier Luna's band. She was dating apparently one of the band members. And she was also feeling kind of sad and aimless because her best friend Octavio had recently quit law school and he had moved out of the city uh, to work on his poetry. Meanwhile, Bev, Marie, Shima, you went to Victor Cortez's home to look for Leticia de la Luz's address. Uh, you found the bungalow was ransacked. You saw the phrase, see you, smeared above the fireplace in some kind of orange texture. And then in the kitchen, Marie, you spied a vase. It was filled with like matchbooks and trinkets, and including one that you saw that had the La Paz logo and the name Leticia de la Luz written on it as you picked up the lace or excuse me the vase a shot rang out a gunshot and the vase exploded in your hands shredding your your hands and then the shard stabbed into your chest and we saw the blossoming of blood and that's exactly where we're going to pick up with you taking two points of damage uh from the shattering of the glass and from the shard sticking out a few big pieces here and there the whole your whole like like there's like this circle uh just below uh, just sort of like below your sternum and above your stomach where it just sort of starts to blossom into this big, dark red pool. Uh, and then whoever's shooting at you, as you look up, you see laying down on a rooftop on a neighboring bungalow. You see, a, you see a man, you think, with the sun dying, and you see a gun, a rifle pointed at you, and they're going to continue firing. So uh, do you want to try to dive for cover? I very much would like to die for cover. Um, also, just in case you were busy and not paying attention to chat, uh, you you were gifted two complications uh, for whatever yeah, you would like to do with was that Mark? those. Yes. Mark I still... Knows. Keeper to keeper. You're, See you're still a friend, but I don't know <laughs> right now is when I would have appreciated those coming out. But, you know. All right, so I'm going to immediately <laughs> cash it in and auto failure dodge. <laughs> Boom, done. We don't have rules for how I use complications. I just use them however I damn well see fit. So, <laughs> so yes, I am Nyarlathotep pops out of the pantry closet, starts whipping <laughs> around a bunch of tentacles. You're all dead. All right. Marie. <laughs> Marie, do you want to dodge? So, yes, okay. I need to announce before uh, the next action. So, now that I am aware yeah. that I'm, so, holy crap, I'm being shot at, I'm going to dive for cover. The way I'm playing it, is that this gun has multiple shots. It's got three shots. The first shot blew up the vase in your hands, so the vase managed to kind of prevent you from getting hit by the bullet, but didn't prevent you from getting hit by the shards. But I'll say, now that you know that you're getting shot at, the second shot you can try to dodge. So go ahead and roll that dodge test to try to dive for cover before I roll his next shot. Actually, yeah, so their next shot. The you don't know it's a guy. You don't know. Okay. Um, so We're thanks very to the audience. Nineteen thirty-six. Unlike <laughs> even though Pastor Woods <laughs> trying, trying to not put us back to the Victorian era here. <laughs> um, so I am going to take two audience so that my dodge will go from thirty-five He's to a cool. fifty-five. Hell yes. These complications are making me thirsty. You're right. How'd you do? Let's 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 hear it. Let's hear the wonder that is Melissa's role. I can't read do? Melissa's face when she does it's that. It's not good. It's not good. Look at uh, her. The is 90. it a crit fail? <gasps> 90? Straight 90. Okay, so it's not a crit fail. It would be a 90. It would be above 95. Okay, so uh, you, you try to dodge. You try to drop to the ground. But the problem is, is that they're perched up on the roof. 
and they're looking down through the window. And so when you fall down to the ground, they still can see you and they continue firing. Now, the good news is, is that this is multiple shots. And so they already have some penalties. The bad news is he has 150% in his rifle, as I was telling them before. Okay. Yeah. Right. Well, that's a 15. Let me roll the next one to see if uh, this is a hit. Okay. 15 and a 25. So this will hit you. So you do, in fact, get hit as you drop to the ground and you feel as like a, a, a the bullet crackles through like maybe the, the curtain. You see the curtain just sort of rips off and falls. And then you feel this dull thud in your side as you land on the ground and then a bullet hits you. Ah, uh, you're going to take, in addition to the two points of damage from the shards of glass, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you're also going to take, oh my gosh, 13 points of damage from the shot. Shit. Okay. Okay. I'm still up. All right. Well, actually, you're down. You fell to the ground. And now for the third shot, oh. but I have two penalty die for this one. So this one's going to be much harder to hit. Uh, okay. My 24. She just did a bunch of stuff when I added that damage. 84. In. And 34. Okay, so uh, so 84 was my worst worst roll, and so a third shot comes through, but you see an explosion on one of like the, the cabinets nearby that just splinters and the wood goes in different directions, but it misses you right next to your head. But nonetheless, you have now all these different shards of glass sticking out of you, bleeding your chest, your arms, your hands are shredded, and you have a gunshot wound in your side. Shima and Beverly, both of you, I'm not going to require... Also yeah, go ahead. She took a major wound from that, so yes. I think she has to make a con save to be conscious. Thank you very much. Go ahead and roll that yeah, con this, save. <laughs> so I was like, the sheet did a bunch of stuff, yeah. and I'm trying to figure out what just happened, because I took more than thank half you, you. of my um, points. hit points in one. Um, yeah, major wound says uh, you fall prone, make a con save to stay conscious, and if you go to zero, you would be dying. But I think you're good there. Okay. You're not at zero, but okay. it's just to see if you, you, you fall conscious. All right. I'm gonna take a Excuse couple me. extra audience. So this is oh, a oh here concept. we go. Look at Long's Under. face. Look at him. He's so disapproving of you right now. <laughs> Ignore him. Like Take the audience. Yeah. Yeah. I would oh, goodness. so like to not die. So that's gonna roll under seventy. I'm rolling it in the sheet so everyone can see okay. my twenty-four. Twenty-four. That is a you remain conscious in significant pain from the shot. You do see the wood on the cabinet splinter as the third shot comes through, but you are not hit. You did. Uh, you did try to dodge. I do think this is actually going to take up your action. So we're going to say this round is over, and we're going to go to effectively a new round. And I'm going to say that Bev <laughs> Shima, you don't have to roll a test. You hear it. A gun, three gunshots just rang out. It's a small bungalow. It's not a particularly big. Both of you uh, have been in the bedroom. Kind of, you've been looking around. We ended on the two of you were searching his bedroom, and you hear the shots ring out from the kitchen. Maybe Marie screams in pain. Maybe not. Uh, but I'll say the two of you are now in initiative. However, you are not higher than Marie and the shooter, who are both at seventy. Marie, I'm going to give it to you uh, if you want to go first before he goes. Marie. I'm sorry. I am, okay, so I'm not unconscious, I'm just prone. Okay, you're unconscious, you're not unconscious, but you're prone, you're bleeding, you're hurt, and he can see you. You tried to you know, die for cover, but that failed. And so he still, you, like if you look up, you can still see him. Like he actually can see you, you can see him, he can look down through the window, uh, and he's perched up in perfect position. So that I would like to basically just like uh, crawl out of view from like stay in the prone position and just try to crawl out of view. Okay. And you still want to kind of, you're trying to still take cover effectively is what you're trying yeah, to do. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, you're not really dodging this time. So I don't really think we need necessarily a particular like dodge roll or something like that. But what I will say is give me like a spot hidden test uh, just to kind of see if you can find a good place that is out of the line of sight, line of fire, because it does look like this uh, this sniper does have very good line of fire. Got it, got it, got it. Rolling under 72. Okay. Uh, 42 under 72. We will say that there is a very narrow, uh, or like there's not a lot of depth, like a pantry closet uh, right on the side of the kitchen. And you can just sort of squeeze yourself into it. There's a few shelves here and there. It's not very comfortable, but it does take you out of vision of him. Now, 
depending on the strength of his weapon, he could try to shoot through the, the wall or something like that. But sure. Sure. Uh, you are you are effectively hidden, you think, from sight. Uh, okay, it is his turn next. And stuff has happened. Okay, now, Shima, you're next up. You hear gunshots going around from the uh, from the kitchen. What do you do? I uh, like instinctively just run down there, okay. and um, I thought I heard Marie scream, but I don't see her. So I'm looking around to see where she may have gone because the intention is to try and find her and drag her out of the doorway or room or like anything that could reasonably have line of sight to anything. Okay, give me a spot hidden uh, with a bonus die, uh, we'll say. I would also say, like, Shami, you heard gunshots go off, but you don't necessarily know anything that just happened in terms of, like, her getting no. shot or there being a sniper or even burying anybody in the roof. So, really, you're just kind of, no. like, running vaguely Pretty into much, the kitchen. Yeah, yeah, I'm just running yeah. and looking for Marie. Yeah, and, like, and you heard the, Marie, just, like, obviously she would have yelled out, like, yeah, a sure. cry I, when I'm she got shot. Running on pure instinct at this point. Uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, 14 is my spot. You don't see Marie initially, but you do see this blood trail where she has crawled and you see the blood on the floor and you see she has tucked herself into this small pantry closet just outside the kitchen, not quite into the living room. And she is there and she is just covered in shards of glass and on the on her side, right, right where her ribs are, there is this terrible wound that is just <laughs> blood is just pouring out of it. And it is more than likely a gunshot wound. Uh, so that is, so that will say you're running from a different room. You get into the room, you find her. And then I'm gonna say, that's probably good enough for now. Do I Bev. have enough of a turn left to yell in where in the pantry? Yeah, that's fine. You can, you can yell that. Okay. So uh, uh, for yeah. dark data here. Okay, so Bev, you, same thing, you hear the gunshot, you hear the scream of Marie, you see Shime, you turn around and Shime is already out of the room. And then she's like, pantry, pantry. Uh, what do you do, Bev? Um, so this apartment is uh, surrounded by apartments on the other side, right? It's it's a, it's a house, it's or a bungalow, a it's not an apartment. Yeah, they're all okay, small so it's little not like houses. A, I, okay, because in my head I was thinking like townhouse. Kind yeah, no, 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 no. They're all small okay, houses with like okay. yards and gardens and stuff between them here and there. Um, that, that, that's essentially the neighborhood that you let yourself you let yourselves down uh, out of like your your taxi basically at the end of the street and you walked a bit and this is where you found. What do you want to okay. do? Okay. Um, is there there's windows and stuff in this room, right? Uh, yeah, you're in the bedroom. There is a window in the bedroom. Uh, in the yelled pantry. Um, she'll probably run out to the living room, uh, and try and get sight of where they are in, uh, cause she did hear the gunshot. So I don't know. I don't think Bev would immediately run out there. Mm -hmm. Um, and sh considering she saw the, the sign in the living room that said, see you, mm -hmm. uh, I'm thinking Bev's going to get ready for Shima to grab Marie and then get maybe the front door open so that we can run out the opposite end. Okay. Let's rewind this a bit. Cause I feel like that's a lot going on when you're in a bedroom saying, and you just yeah, heard a gunshot and maybe room. you don't okay. know all of this stuff yet. So I feel like it, it just to play, she'll it, play go it out to the living room and try and just figure out what's going on and see what she can see. Okay, so we'll say Bev runs out. You see the little nook where Marie has crawled into the pantry. Shime is standing out in front of that. Um, you see that there is the living room, like kind of to your right. Uh, and I'll say if you want to roll a spot hit in Bev to see if you can see where the yeah. shot's coming from, since you don't have to locate Marie, you can go ahead and do that. Cool. Uh, okay. I'll spend. Spend the one. One luck, yeah. One luck. <laughs> okay. Fifty-one over fifty. With a with that, you'd notice the blood on the ground, crawling over from the kitchen, and okay. when you kind of follow it back with your eyes, you look up the window, and you see there is a shooter laying on the rooftop next door, and they look like they were just in the process of finishing loading their gun, 
and then they're now training it back down through the window and they have line of sight on both you and Shima. Marie is tucked in the pantry, however, uh, and so getting ready to shoot again. And say so that's your turn. Top of the round. Oh no. Marie. Yes. You've got your friends so here. She, You're bleeding like crazy. She's screaming what do you want to do? at them at this point. I would say she is screaming at them. He's on the roof I back. He's on the roof I back. Get down. Get down. And so I think at the, like at this point she's staying behind cover and okay. she's yelling at them because now they're just like you know unbeknownst to them where he was just walked right into line of sight so that's she is staying put and she's yelling at them get down get down get down he's on the roof in the back okay so you're shouting this out you stay in cover and bev you look up you see the this rifleman train the the gun down through the window of of the kitchen right to where the pantry intersection is like where the intersection of the living room the kitchen the pantry bedroom hallway etc all of that they still kind of have sight on and they're going to take some shots uh however marie you're no longer visible first one's gonna go for uh for shima uh, and we'll see what happens with that one so uh, i'm gonna oh go ahead and gosh Take a shot at Shima here. Shima, do you want to try to dive out of the way? Do you want to dodge uh, for cover? Yeah, and reacting to Marie yelling, I'm going to throw myself at and try to get into the boundary with her. Okay, uh, roll a dodge test. Uh, and all this will do is if you succeed, you give them a penalty die. doesn't mean they can't take the shot. Okay. Uh, get, can down. I, uh, take... get down! Get uh, down! No, I. I no, you could do it. It's okay. Long's not not sending out those judgmental looks at the moment because. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'll do like one <laughs> audience <laughs> eyes up because I really want to succeed in this. No, it's fair. It's fair. Like for you to not not uh, not die. Okay. Uh, Sixty-three under eighty-eight. All right, so they're gonna get a penalty die on this shot. First shot. Uh, okay, that'll be a success on the first shot, uh, but it'll be a fail on the second shot. So it's a good that you did. So they fire, and you can see that the wall right next to the like that that blocks basically Marie explodes as you dive into it, and it would have hit you. It just it kind of embeds into you got lucky. There's like a, a wall stud that it happened to bed into, but now you have thrown yourself on top of Marie, and the two of you are crammed into this uh, this this pantry. Uh, and I'm going to say there's no more room for anyone in this pantry. This is a small pantry. Uh, however, that doesn't mean that there's only one target left for his actual next shot. Bev. Sorry, Jeff. Did I take any damage from the second shot? No, you didn't actually get hit. I failed. Uh, okay. So so basically, okay. you're dodging. Give me a penalty die, which means I roll an extra D100. Got it. Just, just wanted failed. to make sure. Thank you. This does mean that you have expended your next action. So when it comes around, you won't actually have an action. Uh, Bev. You see, you're the only one standing in this hallway. Do you want to try to dive for cover as well? Maybe uh, behind a piece yeah, of furniture. Yeah. Okay. You look around. Get there's no room in the pantry. The down. Yeah. Give no, me that dodge she... test. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I would also <laughs> like to take some dice. Please. Is Beth not good at dodge? What? No, Dev. <laughs> physical activity in Beverly. What are you talking That's about? That's not what I hear about Beth. <laughs> 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 we were talking uh, one or two, Ashley. You please. Okay. <laughs> oh, sorry. You're talking about dice. You're I thought you were talking about something else. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Oh fuck no. Ninety three. Oh. That's a failure. I do not However, dodge. because it's their second shot, they're still going to get a penalty die. It's just the one though. You would have added a second. First shot. That is a twenty, so that would hit. Second shot. That is a forty. That also hits. Okay. Oh no. Bev, you dive, you try no. to dive behind this uh there's like a chair, this uh this kind of cushioned chair, but as you do, you just kind of stumble into it. Instead of diving behind it, you just smash into it kind of crumbling. The shot rings out and I'm sorry for what I'm about to do to you. I'm scared. <laughs> oh, that's one lolly. Uh but that's a bad one otherwise. Uh it, that is actually 14 points of damage. Oh God! Okay, I oh, have Bev's still alive. Four remaining. 
Okay. You also, I think, that's also a major wound for you as well. That so constitution check to see if you remain conscious. I do not. Bev, oh, fuck. Shima, oh. Marie, I'm going to say both of you can see it. She's just out of reach. She's just a handful of feet away. And you see she tries to dive, but as she does so, she gets shot right in the side as she dives down. And that kind of forces her head to just kind of smash awkwardly into the side of the chair. And she falls down and just kind of goes limp at this point. Blood, you know, spilling onto the ground as well. Uh, it will then be... Uh, at this point, it would normally be Shima's turn, but because you dodged, that was your that was your action. Then it would be Bev, but Bev is unconscious, so it's going to come all the way back up to Marie. Marie. Oh my gosh! And Marie I'm is. I'm going to kill you guys with one dude, one v three. I'm taking this. Get out! Oh my gosh! And Marie was just screaming like, "Get down! Get down! Get down!" And then she just sees. Bev go down, but mm -hmm. not in a way that suggests that she did this voluntarily. And so she... <laughs> She's faking it. She's just... <laughs> 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 go ahead. She, uh, and she has Shima, like, on top of her because Shima, like, mm -hmm. kind of jumped in. Yeah. Um, so you guys are you're effectively hugging. And you have shards of glass coming out of you. And you have a bullet in your side. Yeah, am I like taking additional damage every round for this bleeding no, that's no, happening no, no. to me? No, it's not. It's not. Okay. It's not working that way. No. Okay. Thank goodness. Um. So she is going to try to spend this turn crawling out uh, because now, like everybody knows, this is in the back. So then everybody knows that we need to try to go out the front. So she's going to try to like crawl out from under Shima and get towards the front. So she's just kind of crawling along the floor, okay. seeing if she can like not get up from prone and just relocate a little bit. All right. So I'm just going to throw this out to Shima just really quick. Shima, you th kind of threw yourself on top of Marie. Like, is your intention to like block her and protect her? And so if she tries to like scramble out from under you, is like Shima still kind of holding her down? Like, no, get down, get down, get down. No, or no, not. There's okay. enough uh, new stuff that's happened since then that uh, her intention <laughs> Situation now has is. Uh, yeah, no, it, it, yeah, plan, plans have changed. <laughs> okay. Uh, Shame is a little more like, get out of my way, get out of my way. I need to save Dr. Key. I need to get that. <laughs> to get that. Marie, you run out into the living room. Do you actually try to save Bev? Do you go over to Bev and try to... That's a different thing than going out the front door or running towards the front door. You know that if you get to the front door, you're going to be out of line of sight, for sure. Like, it's that's not an issue. Because you kind of go, go around a little, little incline. It's up to you. This doesn't make me a good person, but Marie is very, very hurt, and she, I, sorry, Ashley, but I, th I think Marie would not want to linger any longer in a potential, like line of sight, and so I think she's just going to crawl towards the front, past okay. the unconscious body of Doctor Key on the way out of the. You pantry. push past Shima. You step on top of Beverly as you crawl to. No, you don't. I'm a, I'm a jack, jack guys. That's a jack. And you crawl towards the front. <laughs> you know that you are no longer visible from where you're standing by the front door. Like, you know that they cannot see you from here based upon the walls of this room. Um, I'm going to afford you a spot hidden, though, uh, while you're here. I know you didn't ask for it, but just give me a spot hidden test. Okay. Uh, that is rolling, and that is a 32 under 72. Okay. You um, are... That's a hard success. Math 32 wise, under 72 is a hard yeah. success. You see, I, you see, no, you're fine. Hard is fine. Don't, don't worry about it. Spend a lot. You see down, down the street, there is like, it's just like one bungalow over and you can see these, these dirt roads and such. You see a familiar vehicle. You see a green two door vehicle, but here's the thing with your hard success. You notice that there is a man still in it. Like you can see there's somebody in the driver's side. And that is your turn. Crap. My turn. And and. Okay, go ahead. Uh, would would she be able to kind of crawl out, see that, and yell back? Oh yeah, yeah. You can talk. That's fine. I don't mind. Yeah, I, I think she would just yell back. Um, uh, shoot her right back. Green car out front. And just leave it there okay. for this turn. 
Uh, and then uh, my I'm not sure if you watched the episode, but the the green two door was the was a man that had been watching you guys. So you yeah, it was no, a familiar. Yeah, I spilled this drink. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, could be it. Could be a could be one of your your characters after I, I kill you. All. Uh, okay, <laughs> the shooter does something, and it has happened. Uh, and then Shima, it's your turn. Um, you now get your turn. You have not been shot, but you turn. You see there's blood all over the floor. And you see there is Bev lying on the ground. You can see her. She's right next to a what looks like, a, a, you know, th this chair. But you think, judging, just judging from the your assessment, is that she's probably still visible through that kitchen window. And you also see that Marie has escaped the, the pantry. And she's shouting from the front. What do you do, Shima? Uh, run to Bev, grab her body, and continue like out the door that Marie went. You're gonna follow, follow Marie, okay? Uh, yeah. So after grabbing, making sure to grab Doctor Youngway. Give me a strength test to see if you can do if you can pull her enough distance to get her out of line of sight and move and all that kind of stuff at the same time. So just a pure strength test. Okay. Okay. You. Step out. Uh, 3280. You look and you reach down, you grab Bev and you just with by by one arm whatever you can and you just yank and you start pulling her towards this small not even a foyer is kind of overstating it. It's just the small little area right outside or right inside I should say, the front door of this bungalow. There is a window, you can see out the window to where Marie uh, has spotted that green car. You can see it as well. Now there is a there is a uh, a driver in that vehicle. They don't appear to be doing anything, but they are in the vehicle itself. And that is the end of your turn, Bev. You're still unconscious. We go to the top of the round again, Marie. What do you do? Oh gosh. Um. So we are pinned in. So like she's very quickly like there's a shooter out back who's shooting at us, and we're bad. And there's a car out front with someone in it and we're stuck and so she so she's gonna see if she can just get she's gonna try to plan a, a, a running route so like she's looking for is there shrubbery is there are there any you know anything that's out front anything that could possibly block line of sight from where the green car is that they could attempt to run away call for help from a neighbor you know like bang yeah. on doors or anything like that give me a luck test to see if there is enough trees shrubbery you know um fences stuff like that to potentially block sight of this car as you come out of the bungalow hi uh, so my current luck is 34, just so everyone knows. I'm not uh, mm -hmm. super mm -hmm. flush mm -hmm. with luck at the moment, and that is an 81. You're pretty sure no matter which way you go when you come out of this this door, they're going to see you. And I would also follow follow that up with, you think that's probably intentional. Like, you, you every time you've seen this green car, it's been watching mm -hmm. places. He hasn't yeah. really inter it didn't interact with any of you, really, until Pastor Wood forced but he's been watching places. And so he has a perfect view of the front door. So it makes perfect sense. Okay. Um, and so would, would I still in this turn then be able to assist um, Shima and Beverly kind of coming in this direction? They're already here. So all okay. three of you, Bev is, you know, she's, like Shima's got her arm in tow and has dragged her out of out of, out of line of sight. You're, none of you right now on this turn feel like you're in line of sight. You're going to get shot. Doesn't mean that you're not in danger. It just means right now you think you're not visible by the shooter out back. So you have an action. Okay. You just you still haven't done um, anything that I would say, you know, constitutes an action. So my, my full action. Do? Okay. What she would like to do then, I would say, is uh, kind of is um scramble through her kind of shoulder bag or whatever she's got um because she does have a revolver um so that she's going to kind of get herself armed then and so she's just kind of like peeking at the front door looking to see if there's anywhere to go that doesn't seem to work and so she's just you know kind of finding the gun and she's just in the general direction of the back of the house just holding the gun up 
Okay, just kind of back by the kitchen, and that's how you want to leave it. Anything else you wanted to do? Um, I, and sh- she'll just kind of give the update to everyone. Like we're pinned in. They're 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 coming from the back, and there's the car out front, and there's nowhere to hide out there. I I, I don't know what we should do. And she's just kind of holding the gun. Okay. Um, my turn. Something happens. You don't know why. I'm gonna roll a little check. <laughs> okay. Uh, and uh, and then it's Shima's turn. Uh, I'm looking for it. Are there any other cars on the street or just the green one? Um, I would say that when you came up, you saw a couple here and there, but there's not that many. No, they're like they're scattered. Um, a okay. few of the a few of the homes, uh, a few of the homes have them. But you would guess this is not like this is this is a small kind of small community, small kind of residential area. All the homes aren't none of the homes are very big. There's probably not a ton of people who have cars okay. in this neighborhood. It's uh, I'm I'm having a moment of like what my dude wants to do, and what I want, to do, and like. Um, I, I think, um, uh, Sherman's going to look for a car she can break into and, uh, drag Dr. Key and then call for Marie to follow. Okay. I'll give you for free. You know that there were other cars back the way you came when you got dropped off. So it's like up the road a bit. So you very you could probably go and try to find one and then like just just back up maybe that, that's fifty I'm yards or so, hundred yards from the, something like that. And so you're gonna well I'll I'll so say I'm gonna leave the unconscious body of Rocky with Marie, ask her to keep an eye out and then okay. kind of book it. And you're gonna make a run. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. And and she's just got her gun up and so now she's just kind of scooted herself to make sure she's in front of the unconscious body. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Okay. You push out onto the front, uh, the front portion of this bungalow. Uh, you a couple small bushes here and there, but nothing that would really provide significant cover. You are a hundred percent seen. If anyone in that green car is looking in your direction, they see you, and then you make a run. Uh, yeah, I'm, for I'm not trying to be stealthy. I'm trying to be quick. I'll tell you what. Give me a contest to see how fast how fast you run. See if you can get to the nearest car. See how quickly um, you get there. The I'm wind. gonna take one out of the next because I really again really want to see. Uh, uh 59 success. Okay, so what I'll say with a 59 is that you will get you will get most of the way to one of the cars, and on your next turn you can probably finish the distance and then maybe break inside or something like that pretty quickly. Um, cool. And so you're out in the open though. Like you're in the open and you're just running as fast as you can, uh, but yeah. you're almost, you're most of the way there. Okay. Bev unconscious still. We come back around to Marie. Uh, Marie, what do you want to do? <laughs> Sorry, Jeff, did I, did I pass the green car in my morning or have I not yet reached where they are? Uh, give me a luck test. We'll see. I didn't really, like, in, in my I'm mind, I haven't curious, pictured it. Mostly. In my mind, I, I didn't commit the car to being on one way or the other. So roll a luck test. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm just uh, curious. I'll give you a luck check anyway. Just a uh, uh, success 41. Is it, would, would Shima, would it be better for Shima? Would, would you think... For Shima, it would be better if she did, or better if she didn't. Uh I I think it'd be better for the group if they were further away. So I'm gonna say that if if I get to decide, then yeah. they, they're not there yet. <laughs> you pass you pass the luck test. We'll say you run left out of out out the at the house towards the car, and the green car is off to the right. So you're running away from it, and it's on it's kind of on this dirt road off to the right. Okay, we'll say that's how it works. Okay, Sweet. back up to Marie then. Marie, what yeah. do you do? So what Marie wants to do is she wants to try to, she's got the gun out and she wants to see if there's a wall that she can sort of peek around to see if the shooter is still in the same place the shooter was 
when she spotted him earlier. So kind of okay. wants to see if like, are they still up on the roof or have they relocated? Okay. Uh, I'll tell you this. Give me a spot hidden test. Okay. As you, you creep back towards the pantry and you try to peek around out through that, that kitchen, kitchen window again. How'd you do? Well, the 55 under 72. So that's a success. You do not see the shooter in the same place that the lot when you saw them last. They appear to have moved. You don't see them currently oh, no. with just a regular success. You don't see they have moved too, but they are not there anymore. And she knows that, that Bev is unconscious because um, Shima said that, but she's kind of just whispering to herself a little bit like, oh no, oh no, where, where did he go? Where did he go? Where did he go? Um, and she's just like, again, like she doesn't look like a professional in this. She just sort of hasn't gone out and she's like in a whole heck of a lot of pain and she's like looking back at, at Bev and like she knows that Shima just left but is just sort of in that like panicked of like, oh my God, hurry up, get back already, get back already. And she's just sort of like holding the gun out and is just terrified at the fact that he might come bursting through like the door at any second. Okay. And it's now that, that person's turn. Shima, you, you're running as fast as you can in the open towards this car. You catch movement out of the corner of your eye, and you can see in the space between these bungalows, uh, probably 30 yards from you or so, you see there is a man who, at this point, is staring you down with a rifle, and you watch as the rifle barrel is, tr is sort of tracking you as you run towards this gun, and he fires. Uh, you can take a dodge if you want to try to dive to the ground. What this means, though, is that you will not get to the car next round if you choose to dodge. It's up to you. I, I'm i not going to dodge. I'm, okay. I'm going to take All right. the hit. First shot. That's a fail, actually. 84 on the first shot, so that's a miss. Second shot. Penalty die this time. And second shot. Damn it. Uh, second shot, I miss. So uh, I also miss. So you're running and you're running very fast. And so he's trying to hit you on the run now. So far, he's really just hit people who have been kind of standing still. And you just hear the shots go off. You see uh, like the, the ground near you just explode. The dirt coming up as one of the bullets hit. You hear the sounds of <laughs> as up ahead in front of you as it, maybe with the second shot, he's trying to kind of lead you, but he leads you a little too far. And he puts a small bullet hole in the rear of this car that you're running towards. But he misses you twice. Uh, and that is his turn. And it is now your turn. Uh, what would you like to do, Shima? Keep, oh my God. keep going. <laughs> keep keep going. going to that car. Because you didn't dodge, I'll say your movement takes you right up next to the car. Now, what do you want to do? <laughs> this point? I'll break the, if the window was up, break it with my elbow and uh, try to use mechanical repair to like hot wired if i need to okay i'll say roll where that's two turns for me so we're gonna say first one is just to try to break inside give me a strength test just to get inside you're gonna be able to break it it's just a question of whether you can break it quickly and without hurting yourself sure sure 17 under 80 hard success Yay! you just smash and you just climb inside at this point. And you, there's some small scrapes here and there. Your elbow is probably going to have a terrible welt. And you are in the front of this vehicle, in the front seat of this vehicle. Uh, and I'll say on your next turn, you can begin. And so that what, that, what this means, I'm going to say you're going to have some cover if he tries to shoot, shoot at you again because you're inside the vehicle. But we're going to say the whole hot wiring attempts will come uh, next round. Bev, uh, I'm sorry. You're still uh, unconscious. Honk Marie. shoe. Honk shoe. <laughs> 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 Marie, what do you want to do next? Um Oh, I so would Marie have heard those shots then? So Marie knows uh, that Shima yeah. went running in that yeah. direction. Uh if you want to milk a, a a roll, you can roll listen. As you are outside now, if you would like a try to improve. It's up to you. I'll take that. Okay. Uh a 60 at 60. So 60 on 60. Succeeded. Okay. <laughs> uh, so you do, in fact, hear two more shots from outside. Okay. So um, 
Oh my gosh. She would... She would relocate. Like, she came back here to see if he was coming in the back door. He's not coming in the back door. There's shots from over there. So now she's going to relocate because she knows that Shima was going to go to get the car. So now she's going to try to... Um, so, Shima, did you go out the front door when you went uh, to get the car? Whatever entrance you yeah. left from, she okay. followed. You went out the front door because okay. the issues were happening in the back of the bungalow. Okay. Would you have? Would you say that you just like threw the front door open and went running out when you went uh, out? Pretty much. I I think okay. like leaving Doc his body there. Like I don't think she stopped. She's not it. concerned about There's closing a door behind her. <laughs> no. Okay. She assumes you um, will handle it. <laughs> so if if that's the case, then Marie would want to go up to the kind of still open front door and see if she can and we'll see how much I can do in one turn. Maybe she just, you know, kind of looks backward and then goes forward to see if she can see this action that's happening, um, where the shot came from and Shima. Is, is there anything to be done to like make Bev conscious outside of like hospital medical attention? I mean it's going to I take think, someone honestly, lending aid. Even to if her there right was now. Yeah. I don't think Marie I, would do it just, right now. Just yeah. Just curious. Yeah. Yeah. Just because of the active shooting, I think Marie would, would be looking to where Shima is. That makes sense. That makes sense. Marie, you run outside. You are in pain because you have shards of glass in you. You have a bullet in you. You are just pouring blood out of your side. Shima, while you haven't gotten hit, you're covered in blood because you threw yourself on top of Marie inside the pantry. So you have two women out in the streets of this neighborhood, running around, covered in blood, gunshots blaring. You hear people shouting, screaming, dogs barking left and right. Marie, give me a spot hidden test as you step out. And depending on the quality of how, how well you do on this, you might even be able to take an action. No, I 14, sure can't. 14, let's spend some 14 luck. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Steven knows it, what I'm trying to do. <laughs> Trying to get you to hit that thirty. I I would I would definitely be under thirty. Um, w would a spot hidden potentially allow me to shoot this round? I uh, I don't think you have a, a, a not just a regular success. You would have needed to have gotten like a harder extreme success. So I don't think you have enough luck. Uh, success would have just let you have seen the shooter shooting at Shima as she dives into a car. So I'm gonna say you I... step out if you don't spend anything. You know, if I spend 14, I'll still have 20 left, so I can still try to, like, mitigate the damage 30, of... I know, 20 is not 30, but... Even Jeff is backpedaling here saying, don't spend the luck. <laughs> <laughs> I just, when I, you know, I'm not, like, when I kill characters, I just like it to, you know, I like to give out... Uh, uh, yeah, you have an out. You have an out. Yeah, I... I would say to be fair that she would have <laughs> she, she would have been more just randomly no, firing no, every direction. No. It was a little more cautious of kind of like looking around, not kind of running out so much. So I'm gonna say no, I'm not gonna spend the luck that I, I just okay. because I'm trying to be a little bit cautious with this, I don't have the angle to see everything okay. as if I had just like run out and looked. You come out, you look around, you don't see anything. It is, uh, you don't see like Shima, you don't see the, the, the shooter, you do still see the green car, but that's about it. Okay. okay. It's the end of your turn. Yeah. Now, since Shima has dove into the car and since you failed your spot hidden test, neither of you see what the, what the shooter is doing. So the shooter does something. Then you hear the sounds of a screeching tire, Marie, uh, and maybe Shima, but definitely Marie. Uh, as you see this green car peel out from where they had been parked and starts driving out in front of the bungalow. And you can see there's a man that you've seen before at this point. Actually, Marie, I don't think you actually saw him, but he's staring out at you as you're covered in blood. <laughs> and he is and he is just shouting something in Spanish and you don't fully understand what he's saying. Uh, but you can see he has like kind of pulled from where he's been parked and he's out in front of uh, of Cortez's bungalow. And that's the end of his turn. Yeah. Shima, you are in the front seat of this car. You know that you are just shot at. You're, there's glass all over the place. And you immediately try to just 
find some way to start this thing inside? Is that right? Pretty much. She's gonna first look like in the visor and in the in the glove part for keys because those are the two places mm. she knows she will find key keys. And okay. if there are no keys, then she's gonna try and roll a luck test. Let's see if you get lucky. And this person is extraordinarily trustworthy of their neighbors. <laughs> Never uh, understood. Be lucky. This be is a lucky. concept. All right. How we do. Oh, my goodness. 15. 15. You Hard success. Reach, you, uh, you reach into the glove box and you can see there's just some random stuff. There's nothing in there, right? You kind of dig underneath. You're scrambling around. You're digging underneath the... Uh, the seat's nothing there. You look up and maybe there's some kind of visor and you go and grab your visor and the keys fall down and just hit you in the face and flop to the ground. You pick them up and you have keys in your hand. Except it poked you in the eye and your tipper and they blinded. <laughs> <laughs> Classic. Uh, uh, so. And she's excitedly starting the car and trying to get... Okay, so you start up the car, get, get thing going, you have the keys, etc. And uh, the the engine revs revs up, uh, and you now have an active car in your in Shima's control. I'm sure this is going to go great. This is going to go so this well. Is so good. <laughs> All right, come back, and we're going to come back up to Marie. Marie, you're just outside the stoop of this bungalow. What would you like to do? There's this man who has just drove past. He's shouting out something in Spanish to you from the car. Heavy set, kind of doughy looking man with a little bit of a five o'clock shadow. He's not shooting at you, but he's shouting at you. What do you do? Um, I, I think she's just sort of, she's got a three in Spanish and she's just um, gonna yell back at him in English and just like, get help, get help. And then she's gonna try again to see if she can spot um, the shooter and try to help Spot Shima. hidden. Give me a spot hidden. There we go, 39 under 42. You see off to your left, tucked in the alley or like the little pathway between bungalows, you can see the shooter has just finished reloading their gun and is now pointing it at a different vehicle down the left. And as you look, you see like this burst of like gas, or, like or, of like a cloud of smoke kind of come from it. And you see it kind of start to shudder as it turns on. And you see like the familiar hair of Shima, like through the window or through the back and there's glass all over the place. You would probably realize that Shima has just jumped into that car and hijacked it in some way. Uh, so that's what you see. And so you see they're like they're training their gun once more on Shima over in the car, who is now sitting up getting ready to drive. Okay. And so Marie is real not good at uh, shooting handguns, but she has a handgun in her hand and she's going to shoot it in the general direction of the other man with the gun. Okay. So, so you're I'm gonna shouting take... back to this man, go get help, go get help. And then you take your gun covered in blood, turn to your left and fire mm -hmm. at this other man. Roll Not for cure. me, she says. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Marie. I okay, so she has four firearms, and she's just firing in a residential neighborhood. <laughs> she's, just, she's just firing in a residential neighborhood. I, okay. Marie is not it's great times person that's just going to go like run and tackle them or anything. So I'm taking two boost, which is going to put this under forty. So like that's what i'm aiming for here uh and that's an 87 so she, it works about as she thinks she's hoping that maybe just the shooting of the gun will just kind of get attention maybe and help shima do you a little really bit. want that to happen um i haven't taken any damage <laughs> <laughs> and she's in a car a lot harder to hit that okay uh, I mean, Marie, I, sh I, mean I shot test. at him, so I think the consequence of me shooting. I think Marie, you should roll a luck test, that. and that's going to determine whether he turns and shoots at you. So sure. go ahead and roll a luck test to see if he stays focused on Shima or if he quickly turns and starts firing at you. That's a 60. And he's going to try to fire at you. Do you try to dodge out of the way? This is going to burn your next round's action. Yes. All yes. Right. First attack. Well, that would have definitely hit. So let's shoot the second one. 
All right, that's an 80 on the second one. I rolled an 80 and a 10. So he turns, and maybe it's it's not quite hip fire, but he's turning. He doesn't get a chance to fully fire, and he shoots, and you hear a crash of glass, and you realize he missed you, but he hit the front window of this bungalow. Then I'm going to shoot again as you dive kind of back in, and he's going to take a second shot. I have two penalty die on this because of you diving. Actually, how did you do on your dodge check? I'm sorry. I, I should... failed, actually. I failed. I rolled an 84 over 55. Totally forgot about that. Then that yeah. first hit does hit because I rolled a 10. Yeah. Okay. So that means I get to roll 1d8 plus 1d6 plus 3. And I only have five hit points for Well, I just have 10 points of damage oh. to you. Crap. As you try, as you fire, fire, he turns, looks in your direction, pulls the trigger, and you get hit. What we, was the last thing we see? So Marie is just, you know, get help, get help, get help. And she just sees this person and she just sort of shoots at them. And mm -hmm. it feels like that was the right thing to do. And then they turn towards her and like her eyes just sort of get wide as she was like, oh, and just sort of that realization crosses her face that that was a horrible idea. Two shots. Uh, two shots right at you. And we see like the, like they, they just kind of lift you off the, off the ground and throw you back into the window, which shatters and you fall back into the bungalow. And that's the last we see of Marie. Shima. You watch as you're looking in the rear view mirror, or if you're looking out the back, I'm not sure if there are rear view mirrors yet, but you're looking and you see Marie get shot and get thrown back into the uh, into the bungalow itself. But you also notice the green car peel past and is like kind of driving over the lawn in the direction of this shooter. And you watch as like the green car smashes into the shooter and the shooter kind of goes flying back and smashes into the wall and kind of falls down to the ground, taking some damage but you also notice they're kind of starting to get up as well. Like they didn't actually die from that. Shima, what do you do? And, you, and that, I'll say that green car is also blocking your vision of the bungalow now because it's, it's sort of peeled onto the lawn and it smashed into the shooter and it's now kind of in between your line of sight of where Bev and Marie are. What do you want to do? Uh, I need to get the two of them a uh, fucking way from this. This can handle itself. And so she's going to try and drive up as fast as she can to the Mongolo, Uh with the intention of yeah, she. Marie's not dead. Marie's not dead. She's not dead. Uh, we're going to, I'm going to get our key. And I'm going to drag her into the car and then I'm going to drag Marie into the car and we're just going to fucking go. We're going to go. It's fine. She's not dead. She's not dead. She's not dead. Kick it into reverse and you just peel backwards. You kind of take this big swing and you try to like kind of back the car up to the front door of this bungalow. Give me a drive auto to do this all without just like turning the car over and everything as this is happening. Uh, can I take two audience dice to make that a 40? Okay. Got it. One. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, so 58. The, the, spend it's luck. okay. You can spend luck if you want to. Oh, I oh. can. Yes, yeah. I will spend luck. Uh, okay. Spending 18, luck. I think. Yeah. Okay, so you kick it into reverse. You you almost lose control of the car, and you almost kind of clip this small little wooden fence outside of the neighbor to Cortez's home. And you pull back, and you back up onto like this little walkway coming up from the dirt road that you're currently on into the house. And so you essentially like back the car right up, and you're able to just dive out of the car itself right up to the front door where you see there is Beverly on the ground inside the bungalow still bleeding marie did you spend your 30 luck yes okay. it's 34 luck so all of my remaining luck yeah. which is over 30 i spent shima you come in and you're standing and this is the end of your turn so you're not gonna like you don't you know lots so you're standing right there you see bev on the ground bleeding you see glass everywhere on the ground and blood everywhere but you actually don't see marie 
We're going to go to the top of the round. And it's going to be the shooter's turn. The shooter's going to get up, <laughs> kind of dust their kind of dust themselves off. And you can see, like, they're definitely a little woozy for those of you who can actually see them. I'll say, probably Shana can't even see them at this point because she stepped inside. And so we see him kind of starting to run a little bit away from this green car and kind of load his gun as he does. And that'll be his turn as he's trying to do so. Uh, then the green car um, peels back out a little bit and gets back out into the road. And you hear Shima again. This guy is shouting and shouting and shouting. Which you're Spanish at? Two. Okay, yeah, you're even worse. You still can't get it. <laughs> you still can't. Get it. <laughs> okay, uh, and then that is the end of his turn. Comes around to Shima. Shima bevs on the ground. There's no uh, sign if of Marie. she's right next to me, I'm I'm grabbing her and like bundling her into the car. And you bundle into the car. No sign of Marie. Still an active situation. Uh, running back into the house to look for Marie. And I'm going to say you do, and you can't find her. And this is what I was talking about before with the whole active yeah. people in the scene. She spent her stuff. So you look around, you call for her. You yeah. can't find Marie. So at a certain point, Shima, you got to drive away or else Marie doesn't get to do her 30 luck spend where she saves herself with pull. Okay. So um, what does it look like when Shima eventually has to give up looking for Marie because she can't find her? Uh, I, I, she's fucking crushed. She is, she is just broken in a way she has never been broken before. And, um, it it's very obvious that she's on the verge of of tears uh but she knows Octave's in the car so she has to she can at least save her she can you at least sounds of save her gunshots go off again and like the back window like the rear window of the vehicle you're in cracks the vehicle that you just dropped bev in and like you know you're still getting shot at the, you hear the sounds of this guy still shouting and you can see like he's like vomitos vomitos and you started to piece together he's like get the fuck out of here he keeps seems to be yelling is kind of like the idea like quick go 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 we see shima run back out dive into the car peels out big chunk of dirt just peels out and just coats uh the front of cortez's bungalow as you drive away the green car does as well seems to follow you for a little bit and then we're going to fade from that scene okay we're going to pick up shortly thereafter and we're in la pause we come back and we see there's patrick what price tone shift i know it's totally a tone <laughs> shift right this is terrible. <laughs> oh my gosh you could start to shoot if you want just Patrick, throw, oh. throw a punch. Just, just yeah, punch we're taking shots. <laughs> just, just taking shot. And we come back, we see shots of a different kind. We see small little glasses, tequila shots lined up. Elena, Alcatruz, Patrick, just going one after the other, after the other. It's like the beginning of Indiana Jones. And we look towards Pastor Wood. Has Pastor Wood been partaking as the music starts to play? We can hear this 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 band was setting up last time. They finally started to set up. You can see the night crowd has started to come in a bit. It's way more lively when you first arrived. Is Pastor Wood drinking? Pastor Wood is a good Christian man, but he's also a Texan. Uh, so yes, he's been sharing in the whiskey. And so the three of you have been drinking, and Elena has been like her. She is so excited. Like she's like talking, like sharing drinks with her. Like she keeps calling you like your great, like her great uncle, her great uncle Zeph or something like that. She kind of throws out random things here and there. She's asking you all sorts of questions about Carmela. Every now and then she turns to Patrick and she, you can tell she's like laying the flirt on pretty heavily. And I'm going to say you guys aren't necessarily drunk, but you're definitely buzzed. And there's music playing. You can see there's like a guy up there with a, uh, you can see like there's a trumpet playing. There's probably like a, a classical guitar. Every now and then someone sings, and and like you'll more than once, Elaine will be like, "I love this song," and tries to like drag Patrick up to like dance a little bit, even though there's not really like a dance floor in here. This is very more of like a dive bar, but nonetheless, she keeps trying. Patrick, and that's what we see. Now what? this is a proper welcome. 
And so she pulls Patrick up and like right by your table, she just starts dancing around. And, and it's not so much as she's even dancing with Patrick. She just wanted to have someone standing next to her while she danced as well. Uh, and this is what we see when we come to La Paz. What are you guys doing? Uh, Pastor Wood, he, he's definitely sharing the whiskey, but he's not sharing the party vibe. Uh, and he keeps trying to get uh, questions from Elena about uh, all sorts of things. Like, she's been asking about family. He's been asking about the investigation. Uh, and he wants to know probably uh, a bit more about Medina, was it? Uh, the place where one of her boyfriends went off uh, and we have the yeah. postcard for? Yeah. Uh, m- uh, 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 Merida. Or Merida, excuse me. Mer- Sorry, don't Merida. Don't pro- Sorry. Yeah, Merida. Merida. Um, and like she is like kind of dancing with Patrick reaches down gets a shot and drink and they're kind of dancing and she sings a little bit here and there and like you can see that there's people in the bar who know her and stuff and like Tonio like the bartender like this, the middle aged dude with all the tattoos and stuff is just sort of like you can see even he's cracking a smile and everyone kind of knows who she is and even once or twice the people from the band like invite her up to come sing and she's like and she just sort of sort of waves them away because she's got family and friends. And it's like, why do you keep asking about Octavio? He's gone. It's fine. I've moved on. He's moved on. Elena, it's okay. You're not understanding. I'm not asking about o- o- Octavio. I-, I don't I don't care one lick about Octavio. I, I want to know about Merida. What about Merida? He's he's teaching at a school. He's writing his poetry. He just said the law wasn't for him anymore. He wanted more out of life. I want more out of life. Don't you understand that? Doesn't Carmelo want more out of life than just traveling and following a man around? And you're not even there now. Carmelo is very happy with her life. Uh, and like uh, now I'm know. never going to say that here. you should... Would you please let me just finish one sentence, Elena? My goodness. Uh, uh, don't you think you've it, talked enough already? I, I feel like you need to hear more talking, specifically about the word of God, but we won't go into that. Uh, I, I don't I don't give one lick about Octavio. You're better off without him. Any man who doesn't respect the law is not worth respecting. I agree with you there. What I do care about is... is I, I've heard things about Merida, and I'm just curious what you know about it. Why is it so hard to just ans- answer a simple goddamn question? I should worry about God, and who's the one taking his name in vain now, huh? It's not taking his name in vain if you're damning someone. It's only taking it in vain if you say the name without any purpose. I don't know anything about Merida. It's just, it's a town. It's it's a town it's in the it's yucatan i it's a it's not close to here he left okay and it's he's working at a school and he's teaching little kids uh how to read and something he's he's doing good things with his life that's all i know i've never been there myself okay fine fine heaven forbid i just try to have a friendly conversation with family (laughs) <laughs> this is friendly. Oh, can you believe this, Patrick? Is he always like this? Uh, he's always stayed on the job. It's on his mind. But <laughs> the job. We <laughs> played down at Koyokan. I've heard that place is a party. <laughs> of course it is. And you're like right on the edge of the district and stuff. Of course it is. Clubs, music, dance, art, poetry. Oh, good. Philosophy. Just drink in the culture, Patrick, she says. And then, like, occasionally she, you can see she, like, kind of slips into Spanish, but then she remembers, like, you're there, and she comes back into, into English and stuff as she gets a little drunk. Um, wh- what do you say, Patrick? What do you do? Yeah, I'll just press her more on the band she plays with. If she knows Xavier, where he's been, maybe if he's coming out soon. Um, well, I'm going to meet Javier and Hernando tomorrow. Um... They're going to meet me here. We're not playing, though, so don't get too excited. I just... I have some new lyrics, a new song I want to run past them, and Hernando said that he would get Javier out. They've been kind of hiding a bit. 
they haven't really been playing. Like I said, they they skip their their Saturday booking, and but they're gonna come out. Did they ask you Elena, for the song, what, or did you write it yourself? Oh, I wrote it myself. What were we just telling you about how you don't need to associate with them anymore? They're bad people. No, they're not. What are you talking about? They're just musicians. They're, they're associated with bad people, which makes them bad people by association. I'm sure you're associated with bad people. Does that make you a bad person? Well, no, because the Lord tells you to go preach uh, among the, the lowest of the classes with the gamblers and the sinners. So that, that is the only association that I have, guilty by association. Hernando, he doesn't gamble. He doesn't even drink. He's worse than you, in fact. But he's sweet, so I guess he's better than you in that way. Elena, they're working for a cult. <laughs> they're what? They're... No, they're not. They're a band. They play music. They, they, they're they, trying to get their big break. They're uh, recording albums. They're not a cult working for a cult. I, I, didn't, I didn't mean oh. cult. I, I'm sorry. I'm just saying that one of one of the people back in them, uh, he's got ties with criminal organizations. So whatever money what they're getting organization? back by. What organization? Patrick, can you help me out here? Yeah, just have another drink. Takes it, whoosh, shoots it. It's like, what? What organization are they tied up in what criminal organization? Because I've seen how they live. And for people who are apparently associated with some sort of criminal organization, they live pretty frugally, even though they have made a little bit more money of late. Frugalness is always to be respected. I, I'm not saying that they're the top of the organization. They may not get all, all of its proceeds. That doesn't mean that they're not... What was what were you saying? Guilty by association, yeah. No, you were saying that. Why do you think they're involved with bad people? I've known them for years. I know them better than I know you. We talked with the man who who uh, runs what was it? Lose Records was that it, Patrick? We we talked with the man who who runs that, and he he was telling us about the association that they have. The, the man is on the run for his life. Lose, and so you would know. You probably you. you this might be the Stephen thing. A Studio del Manana is the is where Victor Cruz is from. Not uh, not Lose Records. Sorry, um, I'm looking through my notes and I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's all good. Notes. I figured the way you said it. So she's like, on it. What? What are you studio talking about? Del Manana. What about it? Yeah, they've recorded The man there. who runs it, was, the man who runs the studio, was affiliated with these bad sorts, and he's the one who gave us your name, actually, saying that the band that you're associated with is also associated with these bad sorts, which is why we're here right now making sure that you are safe and sound. Oh, Victor. You're talking about Victor. Oh, I haven't seen him for a little while. Is he okay? He's on the run for his life. Really? From these bad people? Yes. See. Uh, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking Who are these bad people? Like, give me names. Do they have a name? Are we talking about a name, people? Is yeah, it like Brooks. A I was telling you about him earlier. Brooks. Oh, uh, the white guy? Yes, the the, the white guy who, who's financing he, it all. He's a poser. Are you kidding? He is just putting on airs. He, he is just... He is a nobody, and he wants to be somebody, and he certainly tries to be somebody, but he is, <laughs> he, you, you just, when you work here, and you deal with as many bands and musicians and artists as I do, you just, you can kind of sense that sort of desperation, and he, just so much desperation, and he is... I will grant you that he is very creepy. I know that he used to kind of, I don't know, like, 
stalk is a strong word, but he certainly lingered whenever Leticia used to sing. Not that she's sung here in a while. Beautiful voice. You would love her voice. So could you please just concede the one point that an ambitious man known to be creepy, known to be stalking, wants to succeed might make poor choices that would lead him to trouble and then people associated with him to trouble? Whoa. Could we make that logical gap together? I I grant you that Jonathan is not a good man, and I know he's tied up in drugs and such, but Hernando and Javier, they're, they don't even drink. They don't do anything like, well, I mean, Javier probably does, but Hernando does. Uh, Elena, you're just talking in circles. You say he's a poser mm -hmm. and he's nothing, and then you say that he's tied up in drugs. Like, how can you say that he is not? No. <sighs> not all drugs are bad. You're drinking alcohol right now. Alcohol is not a drug. It's an intoxicant. Do you smoke cigarettes? Do you smoke tobacco? Do you do tobacco anything Tobacco is not a drug either. That's a leaf. Wow. You're so good at just making up the parameters to suit your arguments. I don't make up parameters. I get them from the Bible. It is written in the good book what you are allowed to partake in and not. I must have missed that chapter. Well, it doesn't seem like you've been reading much of it. I read other things. I read better things. And she, like, puts her hand down in her stack of, like, poetry books and novels and literature that she has in front of her philosophy. And, but, <laughs> listen. He is not a good man. I recognize that, but, like, Describing him as some kind of big boss bad man, I think is just overstating it. He, I've met him and he is, I mean, he, well, he just seems like such a small person inside, you know, like he's just like he has like a hole inside and he's just trying to fill it up. Like he just wants to have talent like Leticia did, or he wants to be good at producing music like Victor is, but he's not. So he just kind of clings and hangs on to those who do have that kind of talent. Uh, what, what kind of, hard things can you tell us about him like do you know where his offices may be do you do you know if he works for anyone do you know any of his associates i don't know he's very he has money i know that or at least he gets money from somewhere but i don't well, know likely like, the oh, drug dealing yes i saw him once with a very tall russian man does that yeah, help I, i've heard about this russian man uh a Knobolov. Knobolov, yeah. that's it. That's it. I didn't talk to him. He looked very mean and meaner than Tonio. Elena, I don't think we're getting anywhere. Can Could you just make me a promise that you could lay low for a few days? And cancel lay your appointments low. and just stay at home just for a, a long weekend. <sighs> I'm meeting with Hernando and Javier tomorrow night. If you want to meet with them and see that they're good people, you can meet us here and you can see that you are overreacting. They don't, they're not involved in the guerrilla fiestas and the drugs and stuff. They don't do anything like that. That's just. I would be happy to meet them and give them the good word. I would appreciate it if you were not there at the meeting. <laughs> just for your own safety. How would you know who to talk to then? You could and give us how a would they you could know tell them to trust you when you do, in your own special bullheaded way, try to have a conversation with them? You just have to give them a call and tell them to look for the two two gringos, and they'll know exactly who to talk to. And you overreact faster. We've got to weigh in. She's introduced to our friends. Come on. 
See, I, I am. He gets it. I'm just trying to do right by you for Carmela's sake. Is that is that so bad? Am I such an awful person for worrying about your safety? Oh, I'm fine that you worry about my safety. I just wish you would worry quietly about it. That's all. I wouldn't be able to sleep at night if I did not express my caution. That what, what am I? At your saying? age, I'm sure eventually exhaustion will overtake you and you'll fall asleep. Yeah, I'm definitely feeling exhausted. Patrick, do you have anything else here? Or I'm ready to go. To go? Got all night. We're waiting for the others to arrive. Are they actually planning on meeting us here? Was that the plan? I feel like their plan has kind of gone awry anyway. So, but it <laughs> could we don't have been. Know that. Yeah, it, it could exactly. It probably could have been. You, you. It was a known place you were going to. It's just a, you know, and it's nighttime. You know, so it makes makes sense that they might show up. So, last thing from her, I'll ask her maybe about her, mm -hmm. the song that she's writing and if she's heard anything about Laboka. Laboka. She. Okay. You know. Hernando mentioned something about Laboka, apparently. And this is what he said. He's a drummer. He's a fantastic drummer. He plays more instruments than that, but he's fantastic at keeping rhythm. Anyhow, apparently, Mr. Poser Boy, what's his name? Jonathan. He, he has been trying to get... Um, duets people to sing with Leticia I tried at one point but apparently they didn't want another feminine voice because I assumed that they were worried that it would somehow take away from Leticia as if I could do that her voice is angelic mine I'm, I'm competent but I'm more of a writer than a performer but I heard that there was some other performer that they apparently found and hernando was saying how there was a a recording session with javier and the others and and leticia wasn't there and i think something terrible has probably happened to her because he said when she did show up to the recording she usually had like a veil on and i i think Jonathan has probably heard her, but no one listens to me because apparently, unless it's an old white man saying it, no one listens to you. Anyhow, let me fix my strap. Uh, anyhow, she turns back to you and says, but Hernando like says it. Character. Yeah, <laughs> she just like puts her strap up. Yeah, but Hernando, <laughs> he says that they found some other performer, but that it was it, it, it wasn't, it just sounded like, he said it was like someone just mumbled and garbled into, into the record. He thought the recording was broken somehow. But hey, that's what happens when you get somebody who doesn't know what they're doing, Jonathan, to try and record something properly. And he did it himself. He brought them in. And so apparently they're some sort of performer, but I've never seen them. They've never performed live here or anywhere in the circuit. And that'll just confirm my suspicions of an entity of sorts. Okay. All right. So we'll, uh, we'll kind of kind of close down like the conversation, unless you have follow-up questions. Is there anything else you want to say? And uh, we'll say some time passes for the two of you. And hours, in fact. And you still don't necessarily see your compatriots. So let's cut over as we see Shima speeding away from the scene of this terrible tragedy. And some of you are driving your auto. And where are you heading? It's up to you. Beverly's unconscious. Marie isn't with you. So Shima, you have to make the call. Where do you where do you go? Uh, yeah, I um if if I know where these dudes went, like that, that's where she's going. Uh so she kind of probably drives a little erratically uh mm -hmm. to the bar. 
that, okay. you know, that they are at. Okay. Uh, give me a, like a navigation test to see if you know oh, yeah, how to get no, to I La Paz. This. I was so good at this one. I'm just imagining that Shima, like covered in blood, is having to like pull over and ask people for directions. <laughs> like, excuse me. <laughs> people look in the back seat, <laughs> sprawling dead Einstein. white woman on the, the back seat. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, and, and that's the thing. Shima very much, like, I feel like Marie looks like someone who is like the victim of all the blood Shama and Defton looks like the person who caused all of mm-hmm. that. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> I, I'd, I'd like two audience guys to take my okay. navigator to a yep. 30, please. <laughs> okay. Oh, gosh. God, it's so bad. You oh, good take field. You, as we've, as we've seen Shama do a couple times, you get lost and you're driving around. And you're driving around. And I want you to give me a luck test now. As like you you think you're heading back to the hotel, but that's not the right hotel. You think you're going to a club. That's not the right club. You see a club. But no, that's that's La Cucaracha. Uh, field. And at a certain yeah. point, you feel the car <laughs> as it runs out of gas. And you are not near La Paz. You are in the middle. You think you're in Cayoacan. Kayo- um, but you're not like outside of La Paz. You're not outside of Atelier your hotel. It's dark out. There's still people milling about. It's not so late that like there's no one on the streets. Uh, and you are in like an artsy district. So there's still some like street vendors and stalls and stuff that are up here and there. You can still see there's some parties outside of some of these clubs that have spilled out into the, into the streets, but the car runs at a gas. I'll say you're probably, you have the wherewithal to pull it into an alley or to pull it onto the side of the street. But you run out of gas, having not made it back to the pause, and you're still by yourself. What do you do? Do I have any sense of if I'm uh, close to the bar that these guys are at, or close to the hotel? You know, you're in the right like, district, but you, you all because you know it's in like it's like in the Coyoacan neighborhood, like this like kind of artsy neighborhood. You know, it's like on the edge of it somewhere, but you just couldn't find it. Like you just just didn't know. You haven't been there yet. Now you haven't been to La Paz yeah. yet, so you don't really know. Uh, if you want I to ask for directions, gonna, you can. Yeah, yeah, but... that's that's what I'm going to cover in flood. Okay. okay. <laughs> go out and go out onto the street. and. The other thing I would say is it's, you probably have the time. At a certain point, that green car stopped following you. And so it's just kind of you for a little while. But you do have, I'll say you do kind of have a point right now if you wanted to try to like roll a first aid on something to see if you can get Bev back oh, to consciousness, sweet. you could do that too. Yeah. Uh, not I, the, I it's just, just, sort of, to... sort of, just sort of get her awake so Ashley can play the game. That would be great. Uh, first <laughs> aid? Uh, can I uh, take two audience dice on that as well? Got it. Thank you, generous audience. Yeah, serious. Uh, 28 under... Okay. Uh, so I think that's like, so we'll say you're outside of combat, you find a, a spot, like your car runs out of gas, you're in an alley somewhere in the Kaiokan district. You, you think about going and getting instruction, you're getting directions, but then you realize that you would be leaving Bev in the car by herself. And so you take a little time, 45 minutes, hour or so to try to like, kind of clean her up, stitch up her wounds. If you have any sort of stitching, maybe Bev have some, some in her, her purse. And uh, Bev, go ahead and roll 1d3. And I think that's what you're going to get. We're going to treat this basically like a medical care roll. Okay. So take 1d3 HP back and you will come back to consciousness. Two. Okay. And your eyes open. You feel pain uh, as you also got shot. And you have like a wound on your head, like a contusion Mm -hmm. from where you, you kind of smashed into the car. Uh, Shima, you've managed to stop the bleeding. You've managed to patch up the wound, uh, and it doesn't look like it's it's pouring. I'm going to say you didn't perform surgery, so the so the bullet's probably still in there. But at the very least, like you packed it enough that it kind of stops just like pouring out into the back seat. And as you wake up, Bev, and you look, you see Shima, worried face, but you don't see Marie. What do you do? Uh, she goes to like sit up kind of abruptly and then the sharpness of the pain of her bullet wound kind of like knocks her back and she gasps for breath as she like reaches for Shima and kind of grabs her by her shirt 
M- Marie. And uh, no, like the tears of the charm has been holding back, start to go on. She's just got. I couldn't find her. I couldn't find her. I, I had to leave, and I, you've been passed out for about two hours, and we're lost. I don't know where we are. I couldn't find her, and I couldn't. And and she's just weeping and stammering. And she kind of takes a long, like, a a deep breath, and it comes out in a groan as she, again, sits herself up, but takes the time. And she's going to look to see if she can recognize where are we. Okay. Um, Give me a navigation, but you're going to get a penalty die because you... That's fair. You didn't see, like, the travel. You're just kind of taking one little snapshot. I can do that. And you are not feeling well at all, Bev. Yeah, she feels like shit. Uh, uh, that is a big fail. That's a that's a crit just, fail. That's a crit fail. Let's say that you are you for a moment you you are very out of it, and that you actually start thinking you're in, in Los Angeles. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We're on the same page. Perfect. And it takes like it takes you having to like a couple minutes of you piecing together as your memory of the last moments. Uh, begins to start coming back. And I need both of you to actually roll sand tests as that was a significant amount of violence done to you, your friends. You think maybe one of your friends is dead. Uh, so both of you give us a sand test. There. Uh, we got a fail with the 73. That okay. is a regular success with a 35. Shami, you have been, you've seen much more than Beth and you've been through some things. So take one point of sand. Uh, sand loss as you are feeling like you know the the pressure of this situation and you saw it more than anyone else bev you keep it together a lot of the things like marie possibly dying the craziness of these cars the shooter all this kind of stuff you almost really hit yeah it doesn't like your memory is maybe a little foggy of it all too because you banged your head so like that's just sort of like the ignorance is bliss kind of thing not that you're you're in still significant pain yeah you're keeping it together um, we gotta go to UCLA. Um, find Ed, and and she just kind of like will lay back down again, and and because she's sweating profusely um, from the pain, and she's still kind of panting as like she's holding her gunshot wound. Um, right, you you know how to get to UCLA A hospital. Uh. Darkly, we're we're in Mexico City. We're we're not in LA. We haven't been in LA in a few months. And like she's got a lump on her head, and uh, and so she'll sit up again, and like that's when she'll start to like look around and like kind of pay attention. Maybe she struggles to like actually see the street signs, and then she sees that they're in Spanish, and then it starts to make sense. Where's okay. Where's Patrick? Where's Pastor? I, we need to find them. And, and Where's she gives Marie? Them the name of the bar and I don't. I I wasn't able to find her. Um, okay. And then she'll like reach up and she'll wipe your tears off your face. It's okay. And uh, and Beverly's gonna try and get out of the car and. Uh, okay. uh yeah, no, uh, Shara pulls her back down because she was just talking about Ali. Mm-hmm. Like, no, no, but you, you have to stay here. Just, just, I'll, I'll go find out where we are and where we need to go. Okay, just, just stay here. Just stay here. Okay. Uh, what are your luck scores, both the two of you? Uh, 44. Uh, 31. 44. Uh, Shime, give me a luck test. <laughs> this is gonna be the lower, whoever did the lower. Give me a look test. Come on, be lucky. Be lucky. <sighs> Six it takes it it takes a while. Like you ask this person and you last but you, you even say La Paz and like people are gonna wave you off and then like some people see you 
and you have blood stains all over your body, like all over your clothes. They may not be yours. They might not be wounds, but like there's lots of blood on you from when you landed on Marie and maybe on your face, maybe some of it's dried by this point. And so you get a lot of strange looks at a certain point. And you, as you're wandering around Shima, and like you're in the area, you're not straying probably too far from the vehicle. You do notice down the down the, the street a little bit. One of the people, one of this this elderly woman, she was very sweet, but she looked very concerned and she kept saying something to you. She clearly didn't speak English, uh, but she kept saying things to you and she disappeared. You see her rounding the corner and she has, she, it's like she's pulling and motioning what appears to be a police officer. And they're walking down the street in the direction of where you and Bev have parked your stolen car and where one of you has a gunshot wound. So, what do you do with that? Oh, I'm I'm running back to the car. Run back to the car, <laughs> Bev. At this point, your your the fogginess is starting to fade. The pain's still there, but the fogginess, like you're getting flashes of everything that happens. You remember seeing Marie get shot. You remember her in the pantry, bits and pieces. Maybe you even have like a vague phrase or word or something like that even when you were unconscious that just sort of like seeps back in but then you see Shimer running back up panicked what do you two do uh Shimer's gonna say to uh Bev um Ducky I think there's there's just a police there's police coming but you can talk to them you can talk to them right you can talk to them in in Latin, I, I don't. But we we should talk to them. We should talk to them, or should we go up? I don't. I don't know. Uh, we uh, Sh- whose Sh- car Shama's is this? pretty convinced that Doctor Yate can talk them out of this. <laughs> so she's going um, to jail. Uh, Fuck. Yeah, I mean. Bev, you might be able to converse with them, but you're also bleeding from a gunshot, and you're in a stolen car. So... Yeah. You could, you know... Chances are it's not gonna go well for you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we should probably get... We we can't... This is... Whose car is this, Shima? I don't don't know! It's just the first one I was able to get! It was the first one I was able to get! Okay, then... Let's go, let's go. And and she's going to help the Arky up. And, and the intention is to find a building for them to hug her behind her some shit. Okay. So you get Bev out and you guys flee the scene. Uh, and uh, we're going to cut from there. And we're going to go back to the pause. And it's much later in the night. Things have gotten much quieter. Uh, you can tell that Elena maybe has run a little bit out of gas. Uh, music has died down. You can tell more people of that. Like it's, it's like midnight-ish, and it dawns on Pastor Wood and Patrick that your, you know, your friends Marie and Bev and Shima never arrived. It's getting late. We should meet tomorrow. Elena, could we walk you home? <sighs> I'm I, I'm across the street. It's fine. I'm well, fine. I'm, I'm, I'm capable right ac- of walking across the street. Let's go. Are you? Okay, let's go across the street. Night, Tonio. We're leaving. And he, like, waves. And you walk her across the street. And she turns around. She gives you a big hug, Patrick. And then she waves goodnight to Pastor and goes inside her building. Uh, you guys never made uh, it. Yeah. They got lost. Where, they were headed to uh, Victor's home, right? Yeah, they just needed to pick up a an address. Do you I know where that is? We go back to the hotel, check for messages, and then if we don't hear anything, we go to Victor's. Right. We probably just made it back to the hotel. All right. Okay. Let's head back. Two of you return to your hotel, not that far away. Again, everything, you guys have sort of localized yourself to the right neighborhood, so it's not as difficult. And I would say since you two came directly 
uh, not directly from the hotel, but you would kind of, I would say at this point late, you got your, you're kind of drunk a little bit. So maybe it takes a little, little longer to get back, but eventually you'll find your way back. Um, and it's the house of dreams, Casa de las Suenos. And you go up to your third floor and you all have, uh, unless you stop along the way, but you go up, let's say, I'm going to say, actually you go in, uh, Melissa, what was your luck before you spent it all? 34, you said? Yes, it was. Okay. Um, you, you come in and you're like in the lobby area. Remember there's that centralized courtyard with all the beautiful little bistro tables and, and it all is kind of underneath an open sky. And then you have that interior balcony that looks over top of that central, central bistro. Um, you see one of the workers, um, and it is, uh, Pastor Red, give me a luck test. All right. Uh, my luck is 37 right now. That is a failure with a 93. Uh, the one who comes up is the one that you had kind of accosted last night as you were trying to get back up to your room after taking nectar accidentally. And they run up to you, and then you can see they get very nervous. But then they turn towards Patrick instead. And you can see Pastor Wood and Patrick that he seems to be trying to keep a distance between Pastor Pastor Wood. But he starts speaking first in Spanish, but then he kind of stops. And then kind of a sort of some, some, some sort of troubled, you know, some sort of broken English here and there. He says, your um, woman friend, very hurt. Very injured. Um, and it, it, she shot. What do you mean? Take us to... Come, come. And starts leading you up the... Up to the third floor. And, like, along the way, he's like... We fetched a doctor. She was... We fetched a doctor. And they take you over and down the hall to... Uh, to Marie's room and when he like gently raps on the door the door opens up and because you hear a man's voice coming from inside which I'm sure Pastor Wood immediately judges and as the door opens up you see black and white photographs of all sorts of like Mexican poets and artists like kind of on the wall here and there but you see the bed is sprawled out and Marie is laying on top of it you can see there are there's blood everywhere on the ground. Bandages, the sheets, the linens. You can see there is a man with kind of graying hair, almost white in some places, big heavy mustache. And he is is kind of what looks like he's got like these little utensils and he's digging deeply into Marie's side. We flash from there for a second though. And we cut back for a moment. And we see Marie getting shot once more, getting blown back, literally lifted off the ground and through the window of the bungalow, smashing down like into one of the rooms. And Marie, what happened after that point? Because you spent your luck, your 34 luck, you're down to zero luck to survive this somehow. But also we saw when Shima went into the recover Bev, you weren't there anymore. What did Marie do? And how did she end up back at the hotel? What do you think? So Marie basically just um, went back into the pantry. Like she just like with any last bit of en- like, you know, dying energy almost just sort of like went back into the pantry because that was sort of like a safe space. And then she sort of loses consciousness and the next thing that she like sees or feels is that she's like cold and wet and she sort of like opens her eyes and there's this woman that's like standing over her um and she's got like a wet rag and she's she she's sort of like kind of unbuttoned her blouse a bit and she's just trying to just furiously wipe at blood um and marie it's just 
startled, you know, as she just comes to and she's just in so much pain. Um, and she's just sort of like pulling on her on her arm and she's like, my friend's okay, my friend's okay. And this woman just sort of looks at her and she just says like, silencio, silencio, which Marie doesn't understand what that means, but she's basically telling her like, shut up, like you're hurt, like stop. Um, and then she kind of like fades back out again. And then she kind of comes back to again and she's sort of being kind of walked almost by this woman. And she's just sort of like moving her to sort of like a, a busier street. Um, and so she kind of like got her out of the house and away from that area and then just sort of like left her where she was probably going to be found um, and is just sort of like shooing her and just saying like, te vas, te vas, which is just sort of like, you, you go away now. Um, and then she just sort of like leaves her on, you know, almost like a, a bench, you know, sort of like on a, you know, roadside park or something on like the main road where like someone is very clearly going to sort of see her and attend to her. So at some and point... So, yeah. Good Samaritan? Like, is that what this mm -hmm. is? Yeah, basically. Okay. And so she 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 keeps kind of coming in and out of consciousness. And so like she she grabs something out of her bag, um, and she's just looking around like, oh, oh my dear, oh, oh my dear. And she doesn't kind of recognize where she is, but she kind of pulls out a piece of paper to like write down Casa de los Sueños. And just, or she's just, just sort maybe of like, you hold up your your key, your hotel key. Like there's like a blue oh, yeah, yeah, keychain, yeah. and it's got like the logo of of hotel, yep. yeah, of Casa de las Buenas, House of Dreams. Yeah, and so she okay. just sort of she's just sort of sitting there, coming in and out of consciousness, <laughs> like just like sort of holding this in her hand. And we see like the next thing is like that Good Samaritan who probably should have taken you to a hospital, so they're not that good of a Samaritan, but they. They also probably are nervous maybe about showing up in a hospital. So they bring you and at a certain point, they just just sort of gently push you out of the car out in front of the hotel. It's nighttime and he's like showing up outside of a hotel with a bleeding hurt woman. And you, you have just enough energy to kind of just stand there like right outside the doors. And then the car peels away and then you collapse. And you feel and hear the sounds of like uh, of, of footsteps running out, and you can see the hotel workers and such, the concierge, everything. All they all kind of grab you, and they're speaking to you, and and like all we really hear is like Marie, like just like no hospital, no hospital, no hospital, like over and over mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. And then we we come back, and we see Pastor Wood and Patrick Price staring down at Marie. You can see the. The man who's working on her is like digging into what I'll say both of you probably will be able to recognize a bullet wound when you see one at this point. And you can see that they like he's basically stripped like half of the shirt a bit. And so you can kind of see the ribs and then just blood as he's like trying to dig it out from between the bones of the ribs. And she has all sorts of these other uh, injuries. There's like a small pile, uh, maybe even a pole next to. Uh, like the nightstand where there's like pieces of glass that have been plopped down into this bowl and he's you know and he he like kind of shouts out he's like you know he's just like like shut the door shut the door and that is where we'll pick up so pastor wood patrick what do you do i think this would uh sober me up pretty quick uh so i'd immediately uh roll up my sleeves loosely uh in in spanish just ask him what does he need just okay whatever i can do to help and he starts like pointing to you like like gauze and stuff like that wiping stuff away as like every time he tries to dig deeper and get the bullet out you just see this rivulet of blood come out and you're just like trying to dab at it what are you doing patrick how's the worker what happened where are the friends so he turns to you and again he's trying he's doing his best he has some english and he's just uh, only one only one no others. Um, someone left her out front. She said no hospital. 
and I'll leave Tasha Wood to, to help the doctor, and I'll rush mm-hmm. back out front. Maybe look down the street to see if Shima, Doctor Key are around. Okay. Uh, what's your luck? T- what's your luck at right now, Patrick? Luck's at thirty-two. Okay. Uh, so go ahead, and I'll say Bev. You have the highest. In this case, I'm gonna say highest luck. Bev, give me a luck test. Uh, okay. Fifty-five. Okay. Patrick, you don't see him. It is dark. It is midnight. It is really relatively empty on the streets. You can still see a handful of lights on in nearby buildings, but it's extremely quiet out here. And you can see that there is blood on the ground on the sidewalk in front. Looks like someone tried to scrub it, but it's still sort of stained uh, some of the concrete out here. But you don't see them. What do you do? I'll do. Like, I'll walk a couple blocks, see if there's a commotion around. Okay. So, give me a. Give me a listen test. As you move about. Seventy-six over sixty-five. I failed. Want to spend the eleven? Yeah, let's do that. Okay. You notice a few things. You, you're moving about, and you, you're not sure exactly where it's coming from. Maybe it's a window in a building somewhere. You hear music coming down, and you just sort of feel this kind of strange burning sensation begin to sort of fill up in your chest. And it kind of, you feel yourself kind of falling into this strange sort of trance for a moment. And then you hear like the, the sounds of something above and you look up into like this dark sky stars, not a ton because there's some light, but you can see it's a lot more than we would probably see now. As you look up stars up moonlight, no clouds. And you just see like this black kind of swirling cloud and you're just kind of looking and staring at it and you almost kind of fall in sort of this almost perfect kind of parallel movement as your body is swirling in the this this kind of swirling cloud and then you realize after a moment you hear and you hear like they start to echo one another and one another and then you feel like they're kind of sweeping down towards you but then you hear the sounds of someone yelling and you look down and you see that there is a man leaning out of a car and he's yelling at you in Spanish but you can tell what he's saying he's saying get the fuck out of the road as you're standing in the middle of the road staring up and when you look back up you can see whatever it was that you were looking at is gone and you don't hear the cacaws anymore give him a polite wave and walk off the road And as you step off the road onto the sidewalk, you watch the car pass, you look up, and you can see limping out of a dark alley across the street is Shima, who probably has like her arm up and under Bev, like kind of helping her walk. And the two of them are coated in blood. And they are across the street from you. What do you do? Over here. I'll run towards him. Comes running up. Mr. Price! Surprise! What the hell happened? Come on. She's gonna fall. We, we, I couldn't find Marie. I couldn't find her. We, we got into a shootout at, at Victor. I'm sorry, I'm blanking on his last Cortez. name. Cortez. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Victor Cortez's place and, and, and things went really bad pretty fast. There was a sniper, and and I... All right, all right, we got Marie. She's back in the hotel. She's got a doctor. Come on. You guys don't look so good. Uh, my, Marie's here? Yeah, someone dropped off. Come on. She's not stopping, but uh, she definitely picks up Marie's a little. And as okay. you kind of pull is her, and it, <laughs> it is makes dragging Beverly a little low. Yeah. <laughs> She, she so. was walking at her pace, but it, it switched a little to walking at Shima's pace. 
the three of you head a couple blocks back because you, you had you had traveled a couple blocks away from the hotel but you make your way back you see the stains of dried blood presumably marie's on the sidewalk you go in the main door you see like this kind of beautiful kind of brown like that like the mexican tile that we that was so popular in the u.s in like the 80s right it's kind of all spread about some of it there's like some decorative coloring here and there uh, along some of the edges and you can see that there is like a lot of mopping that's still being done and people are scrubbing and trying to clean it and it's late and there's really no one out in the uh, in that that open courtyard, so you just see like a, a handful of workers or so. And otherwise, it's extraordinarily quiet. Maybe there's like a, a, the sound of like Marie like screaming or yelping or something like that, just just from the surgery that she's undergoing, kind of that cascades down from above. And the guy who's scrubbing this like seventeen year old kid like looks up and sees the three of you come in, Beverly looking absolutely terrible shima on the surface looking terrible because of the covered in blood but like you're moving okay and he just puts his head back down like he doesn't want to know what he just saw get back up to the rooms we're going to cut over to pastor wood pastor wood give me two d100 rolls because we're going to make this like yeah because i'm going to use my doctor's stats as opposed to your first aid but since you're helping, I'm going to give him a, a bonus die. So you want a 60. Uh, first one is a 19. Okay. All right. Uh, so 19. Uh, Mar- so that's a hard success. Uh, Marie. Row a, row a 1d3 plus 1, we'll say. We'll get you an extra plus 1. So all I'm right. do so the first roll that I'm doing is the, the luck spend. So spending all the luck is a 1d6 plus 1 health that you get back. So is this okay. like the same as that, or in addition? No, no, to that's that? pretty different. This, this is this okay. is a roll. It's fine. So, okay. uh, so, the, so the first the one f- was four. So that was just the woman helping me. It was one d three plus one. Oh no, that was yours. Okay, so that was yours. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, I see what you're doing. And All so right. then I'll roll one d three. I'm rolling a d six, so that'll be a two. Yeah. So, so it'll be a so f- a three. Give total. yourself six. Or th- give yourself what six back? We'll say. Yeah, we'll go we'll say so take six in total. Okay. Um, and by the time the rest of you get up, and I'm gonna say, like, Patrick, you might not realize it, but you were gone for like forty five minutes to an hour. So Pastor Wood, you've been working on Marie with this doctor for like an hour, and eventually you hear like like this exultation come from the doctor, and then you hear like a little pop sound, and then he I'm going to reach his over with these small little kind of metal tweezers and he plops down the bullet into that bowl that has all of the glass. You manage to help him kind of plug the hole, the gunshot wound and some time will pass. It's like they try to keep, he tries to kind of stitch up and stitch up and stitch or try to keep it from bleeding and bleeding. And eventually you're able to kind of pull your, you know, pull your, you know, pull your hand away and it's not just pouring out anymore. And it's at that point you hear kind of a rap on the door again and you see it open up and there's Patrick, there's Shima and there's Beverly who not unlike Marie has this huge welt kind of right in her, in her side, like almost like almost underneath her armpit a, a little bit. And like, uh, her, her head is like suffering a contusion. Like the, the doctor kind of looks back, lets out a whistle. And what's the phrase? Was it like, Oh, Dios mio. What is it? What is it? What is it? Yeah, is yeah, that what yeah. it is? Yep, he yep, says yep. that verbally. Okay. <laughs> what do you guys do? Oh, you heard Shima. Get in here. You no, both no I'm fine. No, I'm fine. And, and she kind of like, it makes sure that Rocky is being held up by uh, Patrick and then like immediately kind of rushes over to Marie's side and then starts to reach down. And then kind of, I think, realizes all the medical activity that's happening. It's like, she alive? Is she alive? She's alive. We got the bullet. She's stitched up. Oh my god. And as she falls to her knees and, and finally that, like, <laughs> adrenaline just, I think, 
is coursing through her and the shock of everything. Like, I think it's finally, it is hitting her. What's going on with Dr. Key? You've been shot as well? Yeah, and then she just says ayuda, which is help in Spanish. And then uh, as she just looks at this doctor, because uh, she's unsure if the bullet is still remaining within her or if it passed through. Um, and so he's just, like, like flavor wise, because I know Shyam already yeah. did the role. And he'll nod and like maybe because this room is now covered in all these little bandages and gauze and linens covered in blood by this doctor. And maybe you go a couple doors down to your own room and he begins kind of doing the same thing. And we'll say, like, as Shima is, like, down at the side of the bed, she's like, thank you, th- thank you, thank you. We see Marie's eyes kind of flicker open. And we'll go ahead and end there for tonight. And we'll pick up next week with you all back together. Alive? And <laughs> totally ish. alive? Oh. And we'll see where we go from here. Oh my gosh, that was that went Holy so God. bad. That the guy had medical so tongs. There's no way bad. he's not a doctor. Like, you know, why else would you have those? Um, no meth? Answer. I don't know. I just assume everything's meth. <laughs> Mortician. <laughs> Isn't that know? what Hulk said? And like one of our comedies, like, I assume it's meth. It's a Delta Green thing. It's like, yeah, it's got to be a meth. So, anyhow, okay. So, there you go. Hey, everything's great, guys. Kezer and God wow. Wow. Great I show. mean, we're not a dead body inside that bungalow. So that's that. two people I've gotten, if not for Pulp Cthulhu luck rules. Two people would be gone so yeah. far. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's two now. So I'm just going to go ahead and put a little notch on my suspenders. No, no, no. Doesn't <laughs> count. Doesn't count <laughs> unless it. And the, I on think this that suspender, counts. it does. This suspender, it doesn't. So, so this suspender is a mind of its car. own. Yep. 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 Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. I got questions. Yeah. I would hope so. I would hope so. We'll pick up <laughs> next week and we'll see where we're at. And yeah, like it, that it, things got a little dangerous. It's got a little dangerous. Everyone was all happy, like ha 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 ha, music, everything's happy. And then bam, shot right in your freaking chest. Yeah, that's what you get. I will also say, Marie, for the sake of being nice, the last thing we maybe see like next on the nice stand is the La Paz matchbook. You did manage to grab it. You kind of kept it in okay. your hand. So we'll say you still have because it. Because I'm, I'm not that didn't mean. die. I didn't want to be greedy and ask about that. I was like, no. I lived. I don't know if I would You have earned it by that. picking up the vase. Whoever was picking up that vase was getting shot at. So you earned it. It's only fair. Oh gosh. Okay. Let's go ahead. Let's do some closing plugs and then we'll get on out of here. So Steven. Let's let Maitre tell us a little about what she does on the internet. Go ahead, Maitre. I, I am oh, having so many feelings about this game, <laughs> first of all. Um, but I'm also my Plays Games on YouTube, where I make system agnostic uh, content about uh, tabletops and the human play space being centered in them you guys did my plug so much better last week you should just do it again <laughs> i was very proud of myself for getting the that centers the gm and player experience i was super proud of myself so well. my <laughs> heart like, yeah, honestly got it, got it. <laughs> fantastic uh awesome all right so then steven what you got going on man Yeah, uh, I also make content that is not system agnostic. Uh, I'm making uh, my own Weird West RPG. Uh, It's called Huckleberry. It's a lot of fun. You can go to huckleberryrpg.com and see uh, some of the cool artwork for it. And if you want to play it, join the Lollygagger Discord, and I'll run a playtest session for you. I try to run a couple a week, um, and there's really no reason not to be on our Discord because you get to see all the cool handouts and uh, fun gifts uh, and uh, talk to us about uh, tabletop RPGs and other cool stuff. Awesome. And maybe if you guys stop getting shot at, I might actually have some handouts to give you in this game. It's going to be great. There are some. <laughs> I'm ready to go. But you just keep getting shot, so I don't know. I just want to see uh, him. You Maybe. One day. We'll see. Uh, awesome. As for us, uh, let's see. Next game, we got Monday, uh, where you can see some of us here playing some Alien. I'm sure there won't be anything close to death in that. Uh, Tuesday, Steven hops into the GM seat, runs some Frontier Scum. I'm sorry. I've been told I pronounced that incorrectly. Frontier scum. Thursday would normally be Simbarum, but we're off next week. 
Uh, but we will be back to week after with more Simba Rooms not going anywhere. Friday, we've got Warhammer 40k, Wrath and Glory. And we are also doing a giveaway that night. If you hop into our Discord, go into the giveaway channel in our Discord. And if you drop a little comment about Warhammer 40k, maybe your favorite faction, maybe your favorite video game based on Warhammer 40k, or maybe a character from the novels, if you've read some of those, you get entered into a, uh, a, a, a contest for, uh, for a possible uh, copy of Redacted Records 2, which is a supplement for wrath and glory by cubicle seven it's a game that aaron runs us through every other friday night uh and so we'll do the drawing on friday and you could get a win you could get a book look at that pretty cool pretty easy and then next saturday we'll be back to call of cthulhu also check out the uh youtube page adventures and lollygagging you can see all of our shows including things like our delta green game our fragged empire game and a bunch of our old games uh that we've been running for the past several years if you're interested uh, Melissa, who are we thanking for raiding tonight? There are a couple of raids I think we got. Yes, we are thanking Infinite Monkey Tales and Tales of Myth and Mayhem. Fan freaking tastic. All right. And we are going to go ahead and pay that forward. We're going to raid our friends over at Boys from the Baltic Star. Follow that raid. Have a great rest of your night, great rest of your weekend. We'll see you all later. Bye bye. I'll be seeing you. Adios. Adios.